I'm going to show you how to do relative compression tests, power balance, using the Pegasus and the Genesis live on a vehicle. So I'm going to climb in to do this type of testing. I have to get in the vehicle. And when I do, we'll begin our test. As I said, relative compression testing is located under special tests as well as power balance. So I'm going to go to special tests and when it comes up, you'll notice that my group screen will say number of tests in parentheses under the word groups. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on engine test. You'll notice that in parentheses is number three, which means there are three tests there. The first test we're going to deal with is called power balance. When I tap on power balance, it'll give us a set of instructions. And we're going to follow those instructions. It tells you to put the parking brake on, which I did. You're going to chalk the wheels, and you're going to make sure the car is in park or neutral. Then I'm going to press continue, and it's going to give me another set of instructions. If the engine RPM is varying up and down for whatever reason, maybe I've got a mechanical problem with the car or an injection or, or onboard computer problem, you're going to put the car in drive or reverse, reverse being preferred, with your foot on the brake pedal to stabilize the RPM. However, in this particular car, I don't have a problem, so I'm just going to leave it in park. So at this point, I'm going to start the engine. We'll let the RPM come down. Now this down. The engine beeped. We're ready to go. I'll hit continue. It's going to say, please wait, because it's gathering the data. While it's gathering data, we'll build a graph for us to look at. And now you can see your graph is there. The test is almost done. And you'll notice that the engine RPM is perfect. Everything's in good working order. If I saw a problem where the numbers were way down on the negative side, down into the 20s and 30s level, then I may have a cylinder that's not pulling its own weight. It could be mechanical, electrical, and as far as fuel injection, or secondary ignition. So this test is now complete. Let's press exit. We'll move on to our second test, which is relative compression. But to do that, I'm going to turn off the engine first. I'll tap on relative compression. Up will come a set of instructions in a few seconds for us to follow. And that tells you I must be in park or neutral, and that the key must be off for 15 seconds. So it can start a new test. We're starting fresh, so we need to let it time out. So our 15 seconds is over. I'm going to turn the key to on. I'm going to hit continue. And it's going to give us another set of instructions. It tells you to make sure the battery's in good order. In other words, am I fully charged? If not, install a battery charger. And then it's going to tell you to put your foot down on the floor. Wide open throttle. W-O-T. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue, and then it will tell me to crank the engine in a few seconds for 10 seconds. So I'll hit continue, and it's going to say, please wait, because it's getting ready to set up the test. It tells you to crank the engine. We'll crank for 10 seconds. Three, two, one, and now the test is complete. Now, if you notice, and you'll look at it, you'll see that I've got one cylinder that's down at the end of the test. Cylinder number one, although it's not that far down, but it is down. Every other cylinder is at zero. Zero is indicating good compression. If one is much lower than that, I could have a mechanical condition, or I could have a secondary ignition, uh, excuse me, just a mechanical condition in this case. It could be either um, ignition t cam to crank timing, or um, uh, um, uh, valve issues, valving issues, or compression issues because of piston and rings. But if I need more information to understand what I just said, you'll tap the info button, it'll tell you the exact thing, same thing. So when I tap info, it gives me a full set of instructions that tell me that good cylinders are at zero. Anything in the negative side tells me that something's wrong. So I'm going to hit continue, and we'll move on. This test is now done, but what I want to do now is go and take you to mode 6 so I can show you how to use mode 6 in case I possibly had a misfire or any other problem that may show up. So I'm going to hit exit. To move into mode 6, I'm going to go to menu. But let me explain to you what my plan is here. Whenever using mode 6 on a vehicle, you always want to enter your make and model, and then when I get to the controller list, select global OBD2. Do not select Global OB2 from the main menu because you will only have Mode 6 in the TID, CID, or MID numbers. It will not be in English. I'll explain TID in just a moment. So I'm going to tap on Menu. I'm going to go to Vehicle Selection. I'm going to go to Controller List. Notice it's Global OB2 right there, but I'm not going to select that Global OB2 because that's pure generic. My TID and MIDs will be in generic. They only have numbers. I'll tap on the Controller List. 
Up will come my engine and globe lobity two. Here I've entered year, make and model at the top. It's 2007 Ford Edge with a 3.5. I'll tap on Global Obity 2, and now when it come up to the cable page, I'll click on the cable, and then up will come my test menu. The reason I select year, make, and model, so I'll be working with the Ford controller information and the information that we have in the tool to determine exactly what my TID, MID, and SIDs are in English. Our test menu will be up in a moment. I'll notice I've got non-continuous mode 6. I'll tap on that. I'll tap on OK. And when my data comes up, it will be in English for me to see, and then I can scroll looking for misfires. Our Mode 6 data is now up. I'll explain it to you briefly so you understand Mode 6. If you need more information about Mode 6, we do have a phenomenal Mode 6 video for you to review. We'll tell you to vid review those videos later as well as the J2534 video. But if you look at it carefully, you'll notice that it says MID, monitor ID, TID, test ID, 1 and 1. If I went to Global OBD2, that's all I would see. But if I go to year, make, and then model, and the engine size, it tells me MID and TID 1 are oxygen sensor monitor bank 1, sensor 1. You'll notice in the upper right it says pass. Remember what mode 6 is. Mode 6 are the test results of the self-test the vehicle goes through during its drive cycle or the readiness status. I'm going to scroll up till I find misfire. We'll look for it. We're going to go up. As you scroll up, you'll notice the pages are going down. And there's my misfire information. And let's look at cylinder misfire for cylinder 1. If you look at misfire for cylinder 1, it's passed. If anything failed, it would be in red, and the failed items would be at the top. But let's talk about what that means. This is my maximum number. If I've got a cylinder that's misfiring, it may net have, never have gone to the point where it went past the maximum number to turn on the check engine light and set a fault code. So what I would do is go and find my misfire section. I would look at my maximum number. I would look at my measured value. And if my measured value were close or almost to the top at the maximum number, I've got a possible misfire in that cylinder. So let's go ahead and move on with testing, we're now going to move to the Genesis and test the Ford using our Genesis looking at the same three items. Now we're going to test our Ford using the Genesis. I'm going to do the same set of tests you saw earlier. Relative compression, power balance, and mode 6. So to do that, I have to go to special tests. I've scrolled and highlighted special tests. I'll press enter. Up comes, in this case, engine tests. A little bit different in the layout of the menus. I'll tap on engine tests, and now I'm going to go down to power balance. When I press enter, up will come a set of instructions. The instructions will read just like you saw before, so let's let it come up. It says make sure the vehicle is in park, the parking brake is on, and that the wheels are chopped. Then the second set of instructions will read the same. If the engine RPM is rapid or it's not stable, it's up, down, up, down, place the vehicle in gear, preferably reverse to go ahead and stabilize the RPM. And then you may start the, you know, start the test. So I'm going to start the engine. I got a good RPM. I am not worried about it. So I'll go ahead and start it. And now that I've started, I'll press enter. In a moment, it'll start the test, and you'll notice that the graph will come up, and the graph will show exactly how well the engine's performing. So let's let us go through its test. You'll look at it in a moment, and you'll see that everything's relatively clean. All right? So let's let it stabilize a little bit. Give it a few seconds. And there we go. Now you can look at your test, and you'll notice that it's fairly good. Everything's just about stable right there. So I'm going to hit exit and we'll move on to our next test, which will be relative compression. So now that it's going to exit back out, once it does, I'm going to scroll down to relative compression, but before I do that, I'm going to turn the key off because it's going to tell me to do that anyway. I'll press enter. Upcoming in a few moments, our very first set of instructions. It's going to tell me to put the brake, parking brake on, make sure the car is in park or neutral, and turn the key off for about 15 seconds. So I'm going to do that. I'll flip the key off again, which I already did. I'm going to count off my 15 seconds. Once my 15 seconds are complete, I'll go ahead and turn it back on. I'll press enter. 
It's going to give me another set of instructions, which are going to tell me that I've got to have the key in the on position. I want to make sure I've got a good fully charged battery, if not a battery charger in place. And then I have to put my foot right to the floor, wide open throttle. And then I'm going to press enter. And then the next set of instructions, which will be part of the start of the test, once it gets ready to start the test, it'll show me a timer to start cranking for 10 seconds. So I'm going to press enter. And you'll show in the moment of in a moment, up will come my instructions. And it says crank for 10 seconds. You'll notice it's counting down. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. I'm going to go a little faster in this counting. I count fast. And we'll be done in just a second. As long as my battery holds out. 2, one. And we're done. If you look at your test, you'll notice that everything's pretty good. Um, same results that we saw earlier with the Pegasus, just about. Nothing really dramatic. Uh, one still a little bit on the low side. Not a big deal. Uh, again, if I need information to determine what is wrong, I would press the info button. The info button would then explain to me that any number below zero, zero being good relative compression, I'll press the info button so you can see it will tell you exactly anything number that's well below zero in the case it's a cylinder in trouble. The two cylinders you see, like you saw earlier, weren't that bad a deal. Nothing really to worry about. Um, you know, so we're going to go ahead and press enter. When I press enter, I'll be back at my graph. I'm going to press exit. And now we're going to talk about mode six. So to go back to mode six is a little bit different with this tool than you would do with our Pegasus. To do that, I'll press exit. Back in my diagnostic menu, so I'm going to exit again. When I hit exit again, I'll be back in my cable page. I'll hit exit once more, bring it back to our controller list. Remember, whenever I'm going to look for mode six, I always want to enter year, make, and model, and the engine size. And then when the controller list comes up, you'll see engine or whatever, PCM if you're working with a GM, and you'll then go down to global OBD2 there. If I go to global OBD2 in the main menu where I select domestic or Asian, I will then have mode six in generic format. TID, MID, and SID will not be in English. They'll be in numerical format, and I won't be able to understand it. So I'm going to go to Global OBD2. I'll press Enter. I'll become my cable page. I'll press Enter once again. When it does come up with our test menu, our diagnostic menu, we'll scroll down to Continuous Monitors Mode 6. Non-Continuous Monitors Mode 6, excuse me. So I'll press Enter at the Quick Test page. In a minute, up comes our diagnostic menu. So now I'm going to scroll down to special tests. I'll press enter. I'll scroll to non-continuous test mode 6. Press enter. I'm going to press OK to accept the test results. We'll go to retrieve the test results from the controller. And in a few moments, I'll become our mode 6 information, slightly different than what you saw in the Pegasus. You'll see that it says monitor ID or test ID in numeric format, and everything to the right is passed. Once again, if something did fail, it would be saying failed in red, and all failed items will be at the top. But I'm going to scroll down to a particular item just so you can see it. I'm going to scroll all the way down. As I scroll down, we'll go past set different sets of items. At A3, I'll press Enter. Monitor ID A3. It says cylinder misfire 2. You'll notice that my maximum limit is 0. My measured value is 0. My minimum is 0. Now, all my um, A3 are for, uh, for controller area network vehicles, CAN vehicles, A3 are what is misfire information. So let's scroll through the A3 items for CAN vehicles. In non-CAN, non-controller area network vehicles, it would be TID 53. So mid A3 for controller area network are misfires. TID 53 are 
for non-canned vehicles. You'll notice that now when I press enter, it tells it to me in English that uh, mid A3 TID 0 2 is my misfire for cylinder number 2. If I had a misfire, I could go through all the mid A3s or all the TID 53s if I were in a non-canned vehicle. And I could then compare, look at each cylinder, and look for the maximum number and see if my measured value came close to that maximum. Remember, unless it goes over the top, over the maximum, then it will set a check engine light but if, or turn, fail readiness monitors or fail the mode 6. But if it stays under the measure, maximum value, measured value is under the maximum value, I may not have a misfire bad enough to turn on a check engine light. But I may have a possible customer complaint I can resolve. So once again, I would go through my mid A3s or my TID 53s to determine which cylinder was misfiring. So let's just quickly review what we've covered today. First, let's just talk, as we said earlier at the beginning in the opening screen, that J2534 is reflashing the controller, adding software from the manufacturer to improve the controller's performance. What we did today was teach you how to do relearns, how to do adaptive strategies, and how to do coding which are to set and learn the parameters of a particular component or sensor, the parameters of a controller, the parameters of an idle air control motor, or the parameters for the controller to read what my steering angle was. That was the primary axis of today's meetings. We've covered an awful lot of material today, and I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to go back to our OTC studios, where we'll show you how to, on the internet, review this session later on, if you'd like.